Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my September reading wrap-up. So I read 12 books this month. It was a really good reading month for me and most of them were wins. I think I had one book I DNF'd and one I absolutely hated and should have DNF'd. Like we will get into that. Let, let's just go ahead and get it off my chest. The book that I hated. Hey, hey, hated. I mean there's there's two of them but this one I I was so mad because I, I didn't DNF this one and I should have. And that is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, which requires me to talk a little bit about the other Riley Sager book I read earlier in the month before that one, which is one that I read for the, it was my first book by Riley Sager. It was called Lock Every Door. And this was a book that I read for my thriller vlog. I will link it above if you want to check it out. I read three different thrillers by popular authors that are talked about a lot on YouTube just to kind of test them out. And I loved Lock Every Door. I gave that five stars. That was one of the best thrillers I've ever read. I thought it was so engaging. The basic premise is that our main character is... She, she becomes like an apartment sitter. She sees like a job posting to watch someone's apartment because they can't like finish their lease. So, but they have to have someone like on the premises. And it's for this really ritzy apartment a place called the Bartholomew and it's like I mean it's luxurious it overlooks like Central Park it's like it's gorgeous it's where all these like celebrities who want a lot of privacy live so there's a lot of strict rules about being an apartment sitter like she can't have people over she can't you know she has to be there every single night and the ending for this thriller terrified me I was so glad that I finished it in the middle of the day because it was so creepy and terrifying and oh gives me shivers but it was an amazing thriller so I decided to put on hold a second thriller by Riley Sager this month which was The House Across the Lake which is the one that just released I believe this year so it's a very new release and I was really excited I like I'm speechless for how much I hated this book. I understand that in thrillers having an unreliable narrator can really add to the suspense so having someone who is drunk a lot would you know is a is a explainable way to have an unreliable narrator but it got old so quickly i mean this there were like paragraphs dedicated to describing everything she drank and it uh, ugh, I could, <laughs> but that, that's not even that's that's not my crit critique in and of itself but the main character had no personality I mean, she was like an ex-starlet who had been pretty successful. She had lost her husband the year before at the lake, and she ends up getting into some trouble, and her mom, like, forces her to return to the lake house they have to recover, because I guess forcing your daughter to go back to the place where the most, like, traumatizing event where your husband drowning, like, occurred is a good idea. I don't think so, but you know, it wouldn't be a thriller, right, if we didn't if we didn't have weird circumstances. So she's back and she's in isolation and she starts to like the day she's back, she rescues this woman who is drowning in the same lake. And she rescues her and they start to kind of have a friendship develop and she the woman disappears basically. And she the uh the main character suspects the husband immediately, starts to like go off the deep end like watching him and it, it's just it was the worst part about it is that it's a very suspenseful book and besides the lack of character development and my pet peeves with how like some of the aspects of the book like the book would talk about her drinking like bottles of alcohol but then somehow after she's passed out from drinking that much she's able to hear something from like across the lake I don't think someone's gonna hear something from across the lake even if they were awake and perfectly sober in my opinion I mean you know but if someone's like passed out I don't know I found it to be unbelievable there were some unbelievable elements but the ending for this was what ruined it for me I will not give any spoilers but let me just say if you are familiar with the ending of this book I was so mad it came out of left field for me I did not think that it made sense with what we knew about like this book and the setting and every I and I just kept reading even though it was like watching a train wreck because I was like surely this isn't the ending 
like and I had some really good theories like worked up for what had happened I was really excited I was like okay it's gonna be I think it's gonna be this person and I feel like I think it's gonna be like this this and this like I had some I had some like I really thought I had some good theories and this was just so unsatisfying I was so angry like I actually like I sat there I closed the book I finished it and my husband walked by and he's like are you okay and I was like I am furious right now with this book this ending I, I haven't passionately hated the ending of a book like that in a while so currently Riley Sager is a one-hit wonder for me I am planning on reading another one of of his works so if you have a recommendation let me know because maybe this one just wasn't it for me clearly but I loved Lock Every Door so those are the first two books that I went through this month please let me know if you read the house across the lake did you did you like the ending you know was it just me because I was I was furious anyways <laughs> we're gonna move on to something else I'll talk about something cozy let's start with this pumpkin spice peril by Jen McKinley this is part of my favorite cupcake bakery mystery series uh, Jen McKinley is one of my favorite cozy authors she writes both the library lovers mystery series the, the hat shop mystery series and the cupcake bakery mystery series I have read all but like two of the books in the series. I have two more that I own that I need to get to. That my li These are the three that my library didn't own. I've read everything else that my library had and I adore it. This one was very good. Um, so our main characters, Mel and Angie, they're best friends. They own Fairytale Cupcakes located in Scottsdale, Arizona, an old town. It's like a really beautiful setting to read about. And basically their friend, um, they're friends with an artist and her husband. The artist's name is Renee. I don't remember the husband's name. But the husband comes in every week on Fridays to pick up cupcakes, like a four pack of cupcakes for his wife because she adores their cupcakes and she sometimes, with her very busy life as a famous artist, she forgets to eat like when she's stressed out so he buys her these cupcakes. Really sweet, right? Well, later that day, uh, Renee is found dead with the cupcakes nearby. And seeing that the cupcakes are nearby, the police take them in for like, sa like to sample them and to see if, you know, to test them for poison and things like that because they find out that Renee has been poisoned. So not only are Mel and Angie grieving the loss of a very dear friend, but they are also noticing that their friend had been acting very strangely before her death. She did have a huge art exhibit that was going on that she was preparing for. It was like the biggest event of her life. Um, but it was just very strange the way she was acting so they start to investigate and I just I love this if you enjoy like some really good best friend dynamics if you love a culinary cozy mystery if you want an amazing setting if you like recipes in your cozy mysteries I really recommend this series it's just so heartwarming it's great mysteries well thought out I always feel like there's a lot of interesting business related mysteries because they a lot of them involve Old Town Scottsdale which is filled with different businesses so a lot of them occur with different business owners or people in the area. So I highly recommend this series. This book was great. You can read them out of order but I do recommend reading them in order if you can just because it is you can kind of see the characters develop but if you are looking for just a fall cozy read this is great. Pumpkin Spice Peril. It's very fall themed. Really really fun. Another positive read that I did really enjoy was A Hex for Danger by Esme Addison. This is the second in the Enchanted Bay mystery. This is as far as the book has been released so far. So this came out in 2021. And as far as I know, there is not a release scheduled for 2022. I'm hoping next year there will be a third book in the series. This is a magical cozy mystery. So I included this in my autumn recommendations for cozy books. If you want to check that out, I'll link it above. And I could not recommend this enough. I loved the first book in the series. It's called A Spell for Trouble. Thought it was amazing. Our main character, Alexandra or Alex, is basically has just re rediscovered and reconnected with her mother's family and she finds out that her mother and her mother's family are like descendants from like mermaids so they're basically like water witches like they have some different magical abilities when it comes to like healing water and her aunt owns a, a like a, an apothecary and so she'll sometimes enchant different teas and things to help her customers and it's just really interesting to learn about the magic I feel like the world building with the magical systems and stuff in this is a lot more complex than 
a lot of other like kind of supernatural or magical cozies I've read so far and I've really been enjoying that. It's really fantastical. So basically our main character Alexander in this is working with her aunt. She's enjoying working in the shop. She's learning a little bit more about her powers which you know she learned about in the first book because she hadn't been exposed to this growing up like her cousins had been. So she's kind of trying to catch up with that. Feeling a little left behind but they're planning a mermaid festival in town because there's a lot of mermaid lore that's woven into the town's history. And so what's what better than to like hide the like descendants of mermaids like in plain sight and celebrate the mermaid heritage. So like all the other businesses in town they are participating in it. And Alexandra's friend and like very distant cousin Celeste who's a Caribbean mermaid descendant which they went into a little bit in the book is very interesting. She's having a hard time with her boyfriend Jasper because she suspects him of having an affair with this artist who is in town doing like a mural for the uh, mermaid event basically and so she and the artist get into a big fight there's a big blowout and unfortunately the artist is found dead later on and her cousin and friend doesn't have like a solid alibi and she's looking like a very good suspect to the police because of the public blowout just the drama the fact that she did have the means the motive you know she wasn't she didn't have like a good alibi, nothing like that. So this book was really engaging. The ending for this, just how everything like fell together. I didn't see the ending coming. I thought it was a very well done mystery, but just some of the world building in this was fabulous. Like I really, really enjoyed more than I usually do with like supernatural or magical mysteries. I really loved the supernatural elements in this. This is like the most well done, complicated, but well executed magical mystery series that I've read personally so I can't wait for the book book three I'm like please come out next year I need another book I need to know what happens so would definitely recommend this it was incredible so a not so good read for me this month was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides this was actually the book that I DNF'd I read about 150 pages I think it was like 350 in total so I got almost to the halfway point and I just couldn't do it if you want like a full explanation and my reasoning and things I didn't like about the book, you can check out my thriller vlog that I linked above previously, but giving it to you quickly, basically I found the stereotypes about people struggling with mental illnesses to be hugely terrible. Like just, I mean, the stereotypes in this book against other humans, whether it was women, whether it was people with mental illnesses, I mean, there this. I know we're reading it from uh, one character's perspective, so of course the character is going to have their own biases, but it just permeated the book and I could not stand it. It was so awful and the main character himself is like a criminal psychologist, so he basically the silent I need to, the quick summary basically the silent patient it has a very interesting premise I was really excited because I loved the maidens by Alex Michaelides so I was like let me go back and read his first book because it was also really widely acclaimed and I liked the other book so much so apparently this is a trend with me that I've read two thrillers by Riley Sager and Alex Michaelides and I've absolutely loved one and hated the other one so that's, that's where we're at right now. The silent patient is a woman named Alicia and basically like seven years before this book takes place she had killed her husband and by all accounts they'd had a very happy marriage. They were like in love, they were both artists, they were just everything was going well, there was no signs or anything and ever since she killed him she was convicted and sent to a mental health facility and she hasn't spoken one word since she killed him. Not one word. So nobody knows why she did it. And of course, that is very interesting to a lot of people, including the main character, Theo, who is the criminal psychologist. So he ends up getting a job at the facility that Alicia is at, and he kind of weasels his way in there, to, which there's a lot of, I have a lot of, <laughs> I am not in the mental health field by any, in any way. But the liberties the author took were very unbelievable with the way that Theo was able to like weasel into the job, that he was able to like talk to Alicia all the time, like the way that he went and he like interviewed her family and stuff even though her case is closed and it was just very inappropriate. Like I, 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 I'm not expecting a book to be 110% accurate in terms of how it would work in the real world, but it, it was just the liberties were too much for me to ignore. The stereotyping, the 
cruel descriptions and Alicia the other thing I had a really big issue with is Alicia is the silent patient she is the title character of this book and I knew just as much about her at 150 pages into the book as I did reading the summary of the book like the you know the book synopsis I learned nothing about her even though the the primary focus of the book is about Alicia and while yes she is silent so that would you know make it a little more difficult to get to know her there are also included journal entries from her throughout the book and I got nothing about her personality. Everything was about how obsessed she was with her husband, how in love they were, that she was an artist, but they never really went into her passion for her art or anything that would give her a personality, really. She's just a really good artist. That's, that's pretty much all you know. And then also that she is apparently very attractive to men, or at least Theo, like, constantly talks about how attractive she is, which, seeing as he is her doctor, again, that's that's really weird. Um, that, that's really weird to me, but I, I just can't. I ended up actually looking up the ending for it just because I was curious and I knew I was not going to finish it and I, I'm really glad I DNF'd it because I was like this, no, no. I would have been very upset if I'd gotten to the end after all that. So that was a one star read for me. Um, everything else is more positive going forward. So let's hop into a good read. I loved The Haunted Hair Nights by Nancy J. Cohen. This is a novella. I think it's like 11 and a half like set between books 11 and 12 in the series I've read most of the bad hair day mystery series and really enjoyed it our main character Marla is a hairdresser she's located in Florida and for this novella it's just it's a really fun holiday Halloween novella if you're looking for a quick read to kind of sit down with one evening and just kind of immerse yourself into like the Halloween autumn spirit I thought this was really great Marla is basically helping out with her stepdaughter's a, like fundraiser they're like putting together a haunted house at this like manor and unfortunately the history teacher is found dead at the manor when all these kids and their parents are there setting up so it's like how did he you know how was he killed with all these people around no one noticed anything and you know why was he killed so Marla is on the case because she's really concerned about her stepdaughter her, her stepdaughter's safety because she doesn't know is it, is it one of the students is it one of the staff is it one of the like you know what exactly happened here so this was a really fun seasonal read I would definitely recommend it and in general I'd recommend the Bad Hair Day Mystery series Marla is a really spunky feisty character there's a lot of interesting family dynamics with her as she gets married later on and I just find it a very enjoyable series, so definitely would recommend this for a quick holiday read. Oh, so one that I just finished was called Body and Soul Food. This is a Biscuits and Books mystery series by Abby Collette. This is my second series that I'm starting by Abby Collette. I've read A Deadly Inside Scoop, which is the first in her Ice Cream Parlor mystery series, and I really did enjoy that. For the most part, I thought the mystery was... There was a little something off with the execution, but everything else about it I really enjoyed. So I was going into this with pretty like high hopes and this knocked out of the park. The mystery was excellent. The two main characters are Kobe and Keaton and they are fraternal twins who have found each other as adults. They were separated when they were like two years old. Kobe grew up in the foster care system while Keaton grew up in an adopted family from the age of two on and as adults they reunited and they decided to open a bookshop because Keaton is a a former librarian and book lover of course and Kobe is a, a really great chef so he is like a cafe with like soul food and stuff like that and the one the food descriptions will absolutely make you hungry so fair warning about that but the idea of their business is really interesting you're following them along as they're opening their business and just getting started Mama Zola is the greatest character in this book in my opinion she is Kobe's foster mother and she is the most colorful character you will she, she, like, she jumped off the pages. That's how much life and, like, personality she had. I loved it. The mystery itself basically it takes place where Kobe and Keaton are going to meet a friend of theirs. It's, like, Kobe's foster brother. They're going to meet him on a train, and somehow, on the train, in a public place, he ends up murdered. They find his body. And so not only are they kind of suspects in the case, but they were there, they're witnesses, and this is their, you know, a really close friend of theirs, and they're really upset about it, so they start to dig into the friend's murder. And I will, I'm going to say the only critique I have for this book is that it does give a spoiler for Murder on the Orient Express. 
um, which I hadn't read yet. <laughs> I've been <laughs> I've been going through Agatha Christie, but I have not read Murder on the Orange Express, so just fair warning, if you have not read it, there is a, a spoiler, like a fairly significant one, for that book. Um, but otherwise, I have nothing negative to say about this book. The ending was so suspenseful. The mystery came together really, really well. All the clues and breadcrumbs made sense. I loved Kobe and Keaton. I thought they were so... They had a lot of personality. You, you could really picture them. You know their sibling dynamics really quickly into the book. I thought they were, this was a great one. I am so excited. My library doesn't have book two, but I'm going, I've already put it on my wish list to go and get book two because I absolutely love this book. So I'm really excited for that. So another bookish cozy mystery I finished this month was called Death on the Shelf by Alison Brooke, and this is part of the Haunted Library Mystery series. I believe this is book five. I ended up skipping book four just because my library didn't have it, but this was, this was great. I really love this. Our main character in this is Carrie Sing Singleton, and she is uh, an employee at the library, and she can actually talk to and see the library's ghost, Evelyn, thus the Haunted Library Cozy Mystery series name. So Carrie works at the library, and one of her library friends, like one of the other librarians there, Angela, is actually getting married, and she's very excited. You know, they're hosting like a bridal shower for her, and her wedding is just coming up, and a bunch of Angela's family is coming into town, which is really putting a lot of stress on Angela because it sounds like she has a very tense relationship with her brother, especially like they're very much at odds and ends, and her mother always takes her brother's side, even though he's often the one in the wrong. So there's a lot of stress, and of course, just preparing for your wedding, that in itself, very stressful, of course. Well, Carrie is, you know, helping her friend put out a lot of fires, the bridal shower goes off, you know, they, they're able to do that, and then the wedding comes, and she's like, okay, finally, everything's gonna calm down, Angela is gonna be whisked away on her honeymoon, you know, things will be great. Unfortunately, a man dies at the wedding, which I can't even imagine. That's, that is so, I mean, awful. That's incredible. Awful. So, so awful. Um, someone dies at the wedding and it is not looking good for Angela's brother who have been having like a big tiff with this man and they've been arguing and there's been a lot of drama. So her brother is one of the primary suspects in this man's murder and it's just, a lot of drama and Carrie starts to go and sleuth around as she has done in the previous cases and she, I really like they, they use a lot of her librarian skills in this series to really look up you know unique information that other people maybe wouldn't have access to so I find that to be really interesting and then her conversations with Evelyn who is the library's ghost is just always interesting Evelyn sometimes has unique tidbits from when she was alive or she'll overhear gossip throughout the library from like patrons and stuff and I, it's just so fascinating I love it it's just like that perfect touch of like a little bit of supernatural but the rest of it's all you know normal like straight shooting like mystery novel so I really enjoy it would recommend the series I'm looking forward to the next book so a classic mystery I read this month that I loved I mean I've loved the other ones by Agatha Christie but this one it was so good it's called a murder is announced I believe this is book four in the Miss Marple series I'm currently reading them in order and the premise for this is ingenious I I don't know where she comes up with these ideas but wow it's so good so basically the general premise of a murder is announced is basically you have the small town that Miss Marple and you know a variety of village residents live in and a murder is literally announced in the newspaper to happen that night which what would you even do if you came across that in the newspaper I'm not like I don't know um, I, I would almost think it's like a prank or something which is kind of how a lot of the residents viewed it but a lot of them were also kind of nosy so they decided to show up at this person's home and thinking maybe she's throwing like a last minute like you know game night like party like a murder game or something at party so they all come to the house in preparation to see well you know what is this all about basically and unfortunately a murder does actually occur so the murder was announced and it was executed at the time that it was supposed to be like supposed to go off and everything and so miss marple is on the case trying to figure out what happened the reveal for this I, I honestly don't know how anyone could have quite put it together. It was so, so well executed. The clues, the breadcrumbs, like it was such like an imaginative ending and everything and just the the creativity Agatha Christie has. I, I like, there's just no words, but I, her writing is just so interesting. I find that sometimes I have a little bit of a hard time getting into the novel at first, but once I'm like 
20% of the way into an Agatha Christie, then I'm just like page turning, page turning, because I've really just been sucked in. The writing, the language, everything is so beautifully written in her books, and the mystery is, there's nothing simple about an Agatha Christie mystery and reveal. Everything is complex, layered, multifaceted. It's just fascinating the way that she puts these together. So another thriller that I read this month for that thriller vlog was One by One by Ruth Ware. This was my first Ruth Ware and I loved it. It was fabulous. Um, I know some fans don't like this one as much as Ruth Ware's other work because it is a little bit more murder mystery meets thriller versus just like pure thriller. So I, I can understand that depending on what you like, but as a murder mystery and thriller fan, I thought this was amazing. The premise for this book is that uh, this company, Snoop, which is like an app where you can like watch what other people are like listening to and listen to it at the same time. So it's kind of like Spotify and like Twitter with like live music updates basically, something along those lines. Um, basically they rent a ski chalet in the French Alps out, so they are doing it for like a company retreat. So all these employees show up at this chalet and they're, you know, going to do skiing, they're going to do some company pre presentations and stuff, and, if, you know, there's a lot of drama and politics between all of the employees that you learn about, which is really interesting. And then you also have the two characters that are employees, like, that are hosting the ski chalet as well. This book is told from two points of views. I thought it was very easy to follow, and I really enjoyed kind of the dual perspectives on it. And basically, on, like, I don't know, the second day or so of their retreat, they go skiing and one of their members goes missing. Nobody knows what has happened to this person and they get snowed in. I mean, they get like really snowed in, like where they cannot get out, the electricity is out, they are like, I mean, they are snowed in. They can't go anywhere without the risk of freezing to death. They have no contact with the outside world. So one, the isolation trope, the setting, it is so creepy. There's lots of descriptions of like ice and cold and snow and so you just have these chills running up your arms on top of all the drama that's happening. And then as the title suggests, people start to go missing or be, or be murdered one by one. It's so suspenseful. I absolutely recommend it. I thought it was fantastic. This is the perfect like fall winter read because of the freezing cold temperatures and everything that's described highly recommend it. I cannot wait to read another Ruth Ware book because this was phenomenal. If you have recommendations for more Ruth Ware ones, let me know what your favorite is. I would love to hear it. So another favorite author of mine, this is the latest release in the Pen and Ink Mystery Series by Krista Davis, and this is called A Colorful Scheme. Five stars. I love it. It's uh, This is the fourth book in the series. I have loved the other three that I've read. I own... I have one of them up here. But basically the premise of this is our main character, Flory Fox. She works in a bookshop and she's also a coloring book artist and some of her coloring books are actually sold in the bookshop as well. And the bookstore also sells um, and like runs different coloring book classes and groups and stuff like that. So it's very much, you know, pen and ink coloring book themed. You can even see like the beautiful um, coloring book cover. So if you owned this, you could color it in. And I love Flory. I think she's a really relatable, spunky character. She's just nosy enough, but she's not so pushy that it's annoying. Like, sometimes cozy mystery sleuths can be a little too aggressive, and I feel like she has a very smooth way of kind of working her way into meeting people or talking to them to try to solve you know, what's going on. And so basically the owner of the bookshop that she works in is getting remarried and his wife Jackie is this famous romance author and they are planning like a surprise wedding because they're both quite, um, you know, I think they're like quite old at this point in their lives. They've both had several weddings before this previous spouses and they don't want people to be getting them a bunch of gifts. So what they do is they just invite all their friends and like colleagues and people they would want there on their special day to the party, but it's actually a wedding. So really fun concept. I really like that idea. Basically the wedding goes well, everything's going great, they get married, and that night a man is found dead in the pool uh, on the property, which is where the party was at and where a lot of guests that are like out of towners are staying as well. So there's immediately a lot of issues and people who are suspected and Jackie also had really like known the man fairly well as well so she's just really distraught and she also can't account for some of her whereabouts so she's kind of a suspect with the police so Flory's on the case trying to figure out what happened there's some other good like subplots that are in this book that I'm really really enjoyed as well so I would highly recommend the series if you like a bookish cozy um, also it's really a fun tidbit that Flory 
and all the books I've read so far in the series, she will sketch out scenes and different people she meets that are related to the mystery she's solving, and I just find that really fascinating. Um, so she will kind of like get to look at it from her point of view and like the sketching like some people in mysteries you know they make like the murder boards with their clues pinned on it or they write out their notes and she sketches and I find that to be just a really cool fact and it fits so well with her character as an artist so love the series would recommend it so last but certainly not least we have A Glimmer of Death by Valerie Wilson Wesley this was a fantastic first novel in a cozy mystery series this is part of the Odessa Jones mystery series there are currently two books out the second one just released um, like, um, like a month ago or something. Like it's a very new release, but book one came out last year and I just picked that up from my library and read it and fantastic. So this is a supernatural cozy mystery because our main character does have some psychic abilities. Currently she's working at like this real estate office. She's having a rough time. She's down on her luck. Her husband has passed away. She's a widow. She's working at this real estate office with a lot of grumpy co-workers. She's not where she wants to be in life basically. And unfortunately, her boss ends up being found murdered in his office. And so her and her co-workers are suspects. There's a lot of different work politic drama. And she starts to kind of try to put together what exactly happened to him. We also get to learn about her real passion in life, which is being a caterer. She's a huge cook, so there's a lot of yummy food scenes. There's also a recipe included in the book for like her chocolate cake, I think, which sounds... I love chocolate cake, so that's always a plus for me, but Valerie is a really well fleshed out character. Um, you get to learn a lot about how she's handling things, like her grief, her relationships with her family are like well developed in this book. Uh, you get to learn a little bit about her psychic gifts. They're not... What I don't like in a magical or supernatural mystery is when the magic is so overpowering that the character doesn't have to work hard to solve the mystery, and that's not the case with this. The psychic gifts give her like some premonitions basically, but there's not like a lot of direct information that she reaps from it. So I really, really enjoy that. I thought it was an interesting like added benefit that made it extra spooky. This is set in the fall, I believe in October even, so this is a perfect read for this time of year plus the supernatural element and I would really recommend it. I thought it was super interesting. A part of the reason the book is called A Glimmer of Death is because she as a psychic can see like people's like I say like their auras or like their glimmers as she calls them like she sees like colors around them and kind of sense their energy and it's just it's really interesting like I, I I definitely am getting a little bit more into the supernatural cozy mysteries especially just for this time of year it's just perfect and she was a super interesting character I would really recommend it I love the name Odessa what a fun fascinating name so definitely recommend it Thank you guys again for watching. Please let me know down below what you read this month and I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more. I will be posting videos every single week and I don't want you to miss out. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye!